The Bargain Bin Gamer would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land on which this show is created. We pay our respects to Elders past and present and extend that respect to Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders everywhere today. You're listening to BQN. Assimilate the audio. Today, we find out what Six Sense gets you on the PlayStation Network. We go to the movies, and we go on a gumball run. This is the Bargain Bin Gamer. Hello there, Davey Willett here, and welcome back to yet another episode of The Bargain Bin Gamer, a BQN podcast. This is the show where I play the cheapest and absolute shittest video games out there so that you don't have to. But with any luck, maybe I'll find a gem or two along the way. Not bloody likely. (laughs) This week I have really dug up some boring crap. I could not bear to play most of these for much longer than a few minutes each. So come along with me on this journey to find out what you should be avoiding when you're going through that bargain bin. And we're going to start today with under a dollar. First up is a title that I found on the PlayStation Network for six cents. That is right, six cents. So how could I not want to review that for the Bargain Bin Gamer? This game is called Ascend Shaft and it comes from The Voices Games, um, a development company whose website I visited and I'm pretty sure it installed some kind of malware on my machine because it was definitely janky and the not secure warning, well, that kind of says it all. Um, They've got a whole bunch of titles and they're all around the same price actually. Um, There's SQWK, uh, Ascend Shaft and Endless Shaft. Uh, And my favorite one that I will try in the future, Lady in a Leotard with a Gun. And it's about time someone just got literal with their game titles. Uh, Ascend Shaft is something that I, I guess it's kind of got that sort of space invaders, you know, top down thing, trying to survive a whole bunch of things shooting at it. But it's very, very basic. Uh, And very sensitive and very janky, so, Look, take a look. Alright, so you're treated to a pretty basic intro here, and then this lady pops up who looks like she's giving you some sort of instructions. Return soon, my love, I think she says. But this FMV sequence here at the beginning looks like it was filmed on, like, the first camera phone ever. And so, look, you, you dive into a, a pretty basic game, you know, some old school retro Atari ish kind of graphics, which, you know, apparently makes a game edgy and cool. Um, but, you know, that's your opinion on whether you think that's true or not. Um, there's aliens. I think they're aliens. I don't know. Those look like wings. They're flying at you, they explode, and you avoid things. Um, you know, I think this is the kind of title. It almost looks like, uh, you know, a mobile game in the way it's presented. So, sure, maybe this might be entertaining for the five minutes that you're taking a shit. Uh, But other than that, it's like what you see in this opening level is kind of what you get for, well... (laughs) I'd probably say for the rest of the game, I didn't really go much beyond the first few levels. I do get to a bit in a moment where uh, I just, I just got stuck. I just kept dying and then, oh, hang on. I'm going to say she's my girlfriend, this chick. So she's just popped up again to tell me that I, I think I defeated 66% of the, um, the enemies in the level. So I guess, you know, yay to me. 
And look, we dive into a second level. Oh, there's some obstacles. Uh, it's gotten a little bit more complicated to navigate, but my God, is it slow. So let's just speed things up here for a moment uh, and ask ourselves like, you know, in with a cost of living crisis happening, is is six cents something that we're really willing to drop on something like this? I mean, you think that most people wouldn't miss six cents, but I think we're in a day and age where it, it's all it all counts. You can't uh, you can't allow yourself to uh, to let money go that willy nilly. And so anyway, you oh my god, what the hell is that? All right, so this thing's just popped up on the screen and I think it's someone in a gimp mask. Again, I don't know if they're giving me instructions or trying to scare the shit out of me, but I think both things are happening. And look, as I imagine that this this is what being like brainwashed into a sex cult must be like this game. This is probably the kind of thing that they use. Uh, so look, arrived now in a, a, the third or fourth level and I'm being hunted by something that looks like one of my mum's old perfume bottles from the 80s. Uh, and look, it, it just kind of continues to kill me over and over and over again. And I did make a pretty solid effort to try. I was like, you know what? I'm actually going to do this. I'm going to master this. I'm going to see if I get a little bit better at it. And no dead again so look this is pretty much it I, I, I tried here uh, and then I gave up so enjoy these last few seconds of Ascend Shaft uh, sped up to 6.48 times speed you're welcome Ascend Sharp is from The Voice Games. It costs six cents on the PlayStation Network. I spent around 10 minutes playing it. It is not a hidden gem. Our next title is a full motion video experience that has received terrible reviews online. This is mostly negative. Yeah, this episode's Mostly Negative is a very interesting one. Uh, this game is called Dracula vs. Ninja on the Moon and comes from Let's Go to the Grindhouse Games. Now, it describes itself as an interactive FMV experience. You watch the classic So Bad It's Awful film of the same name on a dodgy bootleg VHS. Your goal is to watch the film in its entirety by adjusting the VCR's tracking. In fact, the game describes itself as the world's first ever VCR tracking simulator. Now, for those of you who were alive when we actually had VCRs and we had to adjust the tracking, would know that we've come a long way and we don't actually relish having to go back and relive the horror that was both this film and having to adjust the tracking on any video that we're watching. So literally all they've done is taken some old bootleg B-movie, played it in its entirety, and every now and then you click a button to adjust the tracking. Uh, let's have a, a little quick look at it now, shall we? All right, so this is a really interesting one to have to play in review, because as I understand it, this is actually based on a real underground cult movie of the same name. Now, it's a, so it's a full motion video experience, and we all know that that always turns out really, really well in video games. It's a great history of it. Um, so the actual movie itself, so if you look on IMDb, the description basically says a ninja is sent to the moon to defeat Count Dracula. Who is hiding there? Because of course he is. I mean, if I was Dracula and I needed somewhere to hide, the moon. I mean, where else am I going to go? Uh, and the film itself has a 3.4 out of 10 rating on IMDb. So we've got it loaded up here. 
Uh, let's um, let's see what the game actually involves. There we go. So you want to watch a long lost bad movie? This VHS tape is the only known copy in the world. Mm. I am your friendly VCR. I can assist you with this. Let me explain. Tapes of this age are often damaged to a point where they become unwatchable. Thankfully, I have functions to fix this. Your goal is to watch this film. All right, I'm just going to stop the playback of my captured footage right there because pretty much from here on out, your goal is to watch the film in its entirety whilst adjusting the tracking. Now, adjusting the tracking seemed to involve clicking little buttons on either side of the screen that was actually showing the movie. I watched the whole movie. Now, this is not a podcast about reviewing shit movies. This is a podcast about reviewing shit games. This is not a game. Every now and then having to click a button just to, so the film, the quality of the film picture kind of clears up is not a game. So anyway, I'll give you a little bit of a brief summary of the game. So I guess at the beginning, you find out a little bit about ninjas. Ninjas, what the devil are they? Dear. Ninjas. Ancient Japanese warriors trained in the martial arts. Mm -hmm. Mercenaries, assassins, saboteurs. Mm -hmm. Remember, ninjas are nice chaps. <laughs> Bloody oath, mate. The film has a narrator for exposition, because of course it does. My job to guide you through this tale of science and wizardry. As a king of the night meets a king of the shadows. So I urge you to sit back, relax, and let the battle commence. As Dracula takes on the ninja on the moon. There is the titular ninja. His name is Doug. He's... Very homoerotic in a lot of his scenes with his mate. Oh, okay, hang on, I'm finally- Hey Doug, I'm Barry Norris, and I work for a top secret government unit, and we need your help. Why, hello Barry, good to meet you. So, the government needs my help again. Oh, I've I seen like this movie, don't you worry you about that. that. Now, Barry, I know boy. exactly how this Indeed ends. I Indeed I do. And yeah. your name is widely known as the cheapest and best hide help you can get. Why, thank you Barry. Can I tempt you with a sneaky martini? <laughs> That'd be splendid. <gasps> Richard! Richard! Oh yes, dear. Doug? Could you bring us gents two martinis? Yeah, this is yes, gonna be. Of course, Doug. I'll gonna be a not in front of my salad moment. Wait, was her name Richard? You are a gentleman. That's fine. Her name could May be I Richard. ask who that is? There was no mention of a partner. Oh, was it Bridget? File. Oh, don't worry about her, old chap. She's just a common street girl I met. I felt so bad for her, I gave her a place to stay. And now she does odd jobs around the house for me. Such a nice guy, Doug. I hope she makes a good martini. Of course she does. I have trained her. She makes the best in town. You get a training montage because this film slash game has everything. This is the montage to end all montages. I've already... Oh, it's Doug. That's right. So... Oh my god. I can't even tell if it's blue screened or if they're actually on location. It's overtly sexist because apparently that makes you edgy. The first female astronaut, a part of the 1950 moon crew. Believed dead, but really Dracula's love minion on Earth. And she is one evil bitch. Ah shit! I've been stabbed! Ah shit! Ah shit! No! <laughs> <laughs> you killed him, but why? He was such a great man. He taught me so much, and you just killed him because I'm evil and I do evil things. I kill people and do other evil things more evil than you have ever experienced, and you will be the next to feel my evil wrath. There's a shocking twist. Oh, what a twist! Vampire 
that's right. I was recruited by Shelly Shellerton to destroy Doug before he harnessed the power of the ninja, but I fell for him. Oh, well, I'll just have to feast on you instead, Barry. And don't forget the epic final battle between Doug the Ninja and Dracula on the Moon. This is one for the ages. <laughs> And that's it. I don't know whether if I go back and maybe try and adjust the tracking better, I'll get a better experience of the game. But, God, who would want to? And look, don't get me wrong. I know this film is intentionally bad. But why did they sell it to me as a game? I'll never understand. Dracula vs. the Ninja on the Moon. Yay. Dracula vs. the Ninja on the Moon cost $1.50 on Steam. I spent about 20 minutes playing it, I use that term loosely. It is not a hidden gem. This week's final title is the ultimate bargain because this is free to play. Have you ever wondered what it's like to be a gumball with legs? Well, Glenn Verhege has uh, with the fabulous Gumball Run. Gumball Run is a free-to-play game on Steam. It describes itself as being a free-to-play, fast-paced 3D platformer with online multiplayer where gumballs race against each other through procedurally generated obstacle courses to become the number one gumball in the gummyverse. Fall Guys, this is not. Uh, interesting concept. Uh, it seems to be in sort of like a weird kind of openish kind of beta at the moment. I can't tell. Uh, as for the online component of it, well, as you'll see, there was no one playing when I tried to review the game. And well, I wasn't coming back later because I just don't have that much time. So check it out. Gumball Run. All right, so Gumball Run. Um, probably the more accessible of the games that we've touched on today. Um, alright, use the left stick to move. Press A button to jump. Alright, easy enough. Oops, fell. Oh, that means you start right back at the beginning. X button to run. Alright, it is what it says on the box, you're a gumball who runs! When your run meter is filled by running forward, press Y button to do a super jump. Oh, oh no, back to the start I go. Where's my run meter? Ah, oh, okay, there it is. Ah! Alright, gotta love a tutorial. get the target. Alright. Not too bad. Work. Alright. So. Let's, uh... What do we do here? It's a... Race? I guess? Um... Let's go... Go ranked to play against. Oh, it's online. All right. So here I am in the online lobby, hoping to find some people to go on a gumball run with, uh, and I waited and waited 
and waited. I'm just going to do my usual thing and speed this up here. I was waiting in this lobby for a good five minutes or so. I mean, you're presented with a, an entertaining set of obstacles to practice your skills on, I guess. Uh, but yeah, it was... Nothing was happening. I didn't even see a single person pop in the entire time. All right. No one's playing. Leave lobby. What happens if I go unranked? It's private? No. Uh, can I play single player? No. Oh. Okay, there's this. All right. Okay. Oh. Oh, gumball machine. That's fun. A free ticket to what? Oh god, are you serious? New. <laughs> and free to play tropes rear their ugly head. Real world money need to be spent on gummies to get rewards and what have you. No, 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 no. Pipes on head. That'd be a great power up if I could find a game to play to use it. And it's going to cost me 50 gummies to go again. No. Okay, alright, here's a game I can play. Let's go. Start. Alright, at least I can play this. Like a bit of a time trial. Alright. Sweet. Okay, so this feels like a little bit more of a single player kind of mode. Ah, okay, so get to the target as fast as you can. And it's yeah, it's it's difficult. Like Oh, oh there we go. Oh all the way back to the start. I mean at least I've got my pipe on my head. Whatever that's going to do. I wonder when they made this, they were like, yeah, this is the one that's going to make us millions in microtransactions. I mean, oh, uh, yep. Uh, okay, so it's muscle memory galore, really. Ah, oh, no! All right, so at least you timed each time you start fresh. So instead of it being the total time it takes, you're including every time you die, which is a lot for me right now. All right, oh, bam. All right. I'm gonna get this and then I'm done. Oh no! Oh, oh. Ah. ah! Why can't I land on that thing? <laughs> Yes! 
now I feel an intense sense of accomplishment. Personal best. Fine. Alright. So, I'm getting the gist now that, yeah, you run around, try and do it as fast as you can, and then level up to continue. Sweet. Alright. Nothing. Alright. I can't get past. Unlock. Oh, oh, with a gum pass. Really, I had a gum pass. Yeah. Um. Cool. That's that. This is terrible. I hate it. Quit. Gumball Run is from some person named Glenn. About 20 minutes playing, it's free, not a hidden gem, although I wish I could have tried the online mode. Well, that's it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed yet another romp through the bargain bin with me. Please tune in next time. Make sure you rate and review wherever you get your audio podcasts from or here on YouTube. I'd also love to hear from you in the comments. What did you think about today's games? Have you played them? Did you think something else? And are there any titles that you think I should be trying for this show? Hidden gems or otherwise, but they've got to be bargains. Don't forget that this show is part of a bigger network of podcasts called The BQN. Don't forget to check out the other amazing shows on The BQN, such as All Good Things, Galaxy Class, History with the Zalagis, Infinite Diversity, Mickey's Marvels, Sasquatch, What's the Tea Bev, Cinema Z, Captain's Couch, and of course, my other show, the Trexperts Quiz. You can find any or all of them by searching for the BQN Master Feed wherever you get your podcasts from, and you can catch up with me and all the other BQN hosts over on our BQN Collective Facebook page. If you'd like to support this show and the other BQN programs, you can become a patron by heading over to patreon.com slash BQN where you'll be able to enjoy all kinds of exclusive network perks. Until next time, everyone. Hello, my name is Rupert Wanker. And yes, I am a wanker. Or at least I was, until I took wanker away. The one little pill that helps the wanker and you piss off. Wanna know how it works? Well, let's take a look, shall we? Hey, you wanna go to the pub? Piss off, I'm busy. Right. right. What a predicament. It can all go away with just one little pill. Hey, wanna go to the pub? Alright. Blank her away. Get it. Or piss off. Not quite as good as God So the sun is shining What's the point of trying A guy like me could never be yours Go on my son, get off my son Go on my son, get off my son Oink! I'm really sorry, old chap! I was aiming for the vampire!